watching the Arnold Clark Cup and the second game, England v Canada. And this is the England side who choose not to start the fit again Manchester City pair of Lucy Bronze and Ellie Roebuck with Mary Earps, the number one for now. But we do see a first England start for Manchester United's Alessia Russo following her hat-trick of headers against Latvia with record-breaking Ellen White also amongst the subs. Canada named six of the 11 that started their Olympic final triumph last year, as well as Julia Grosso, who came off the bench to score the winning penalty in that showpiece. The WSL well represented with Reading's Deanne Rose, Manchester City's Janine Becky, and the captain for the night, Chelsea's Jesse Fleming. Well, a big night for the Manchester United forwards. Just her third cap, but first start. That hat trick against Latvia brimming with confidence can she take her chance tonight and jesse fleming canada's player of 2021 but such an experienced player but still a young player leading her country tonight these two nations meeting for the 15th time but never have they drawn germany and spain did just that earlier a chance for one of these sides to lead the way in the arnold clark cup Both sets of players take the knee, the message strong. Back in Middlesbrough, the crowd applauds. So we tee off on tee side for England's biggest test under Serena Vigman. And Emma, we've waited for this England to be truly tested and we have our moment. Well, I think certainly think fantastic opportunity for England it's the game that the players and the staff want in the lead up to the Euros they need this type of opposition in quick succession and Walsh part of that two at the base of the midfield for England daily but to bronze for now and right back Russo now the inform Millie Bright I think the one good thing for the back line of Greenwood and Bright is that protection in front is something I felt this England team has needed over a period of time. You've got Williamson, one of the best deep progression players in the WSL, and Kira Walsh, a fabulous passer of the ball. Certainly a strong foundation from which England can build upon. England's defeat to Canada was built upon errors at the back, really. Serena Vigman was not in charge for that game and she's looking to see her side here see how they deal with a high level of opposition 53 goals in qualifying in six games so far for the Lionesses shows how they've dominated the opposition and their protective mask Alex Greenwood is having a decent season as well for Manchester City so many Manchester City players in the England squad part of the England setup so many were injured at the Start of the season, so many returning to action. Daly helps it on and finding that room in that channel was Williamson. Didn't pick the pass to Frank Kirby, who operating out on the right of the front three today, Emma. Well, what people may not realize is Williamson as a center back is third for carries in the WSL. Her ability to break presses is exceptional. I, mean, I think she'll offer a lot in this midfield against a deep-lying Canadian team. Inga seeing plenty of the ball already. Stokes. Now him. He's got a tough opponent today. Jade Revere. Full-back for Canada. Here is him. Revere tight to her, the hip spins her. And runs behind, and here goes him. And the cover there from the Buchanan, the leader at the back for Canada. That could have gone wrong. Well, that's just wonderful 1v1 play by Hemp, especially early on. She turns in really tight spaces. This is what she's done so well in the WSL this year. I think the wrong decision needed to pick her head up. Hemp winning her early battle there. Getting this corner to be taken by Kirby. Played short as well. 
England have about six in that penalty area. In goes the cross. Scott got something on that, and they're able to clear it away and out of play. Decent start, this, from England, opening few minutes. Well, the crowd certainly making it difficult for Canada. They're already set up in a 4-4-2, very narrow in their midfield. I think we will see Canada without the ball as much of England. Expect England to dominate the possession. Stokes trying to get forward. Outside. It was their support, really, of Kent rather than charging beyond her. Greenwood. Play. Janine Becky facing off against so many of her club teammates. We're certainly going to have a work cut out both bright greenwood williamson all been brilliant in possession for their teams throughout the course of the season i think they will be key to england's attacks this evening well the challenge in there well the canada players wearing black armbands in honor really of the passing of christine sinclair's mother the legendary canadian striker not able to travel to make this trip because of that family tragedy and her teammates supporting her in this time. Tight knit unit, this Canadian side. But England looking to get behind them early on in this game. With Becky. She loses out and hit. Drives on to Kirby's in the middle. Kirby couldn't reach her and defended well by Canada under pressure earlier. Well, they certainly are, but one thing I think this England team are doing well under Serena Wiegmann is their ability to win the ball back quickly. Once again, Hemp involved, forcing the corner. Great start. So Kirby with the corner. Sends it in, flicked on by a Canadian head that time. England trying to keep it alive, but taken into the arms of Kaylin Sheridan. And that goal for Canada. Facing Stephanie Labe really in that position, who retired recently. Some strength in that area, though, Canada. Lawrence, who is eye-catching fullback. Needs to get forward. Strong challenge in there from Bright already. Here's Rose. Promising forward. First season of senior club football as well, even though she's relatively experienced with her national side. It's the nature of things with a lot of the Canadian players because they don't have that full league set up. So all of their players pretty much play around the world. Seven different countries represented in terms of where the Canadian players play their football. Here's Grosso, who plays her football in Italy with Juventus. Lawrence couldn't get round Kirby that time. Well, Kirby's going to have to do that work down the side with Lawrence looking to come forward on that left-hand side. You can see the protection with Walsh and Williamson inside the pitch. Certainly feel it's a good platform for England to build on, especially playing against the top teams. Mary Earps. Only had a touch in six matches. Perhaps he should have a few more tonight. Well, she's deserving of her place in the team, regardless of the opponents they face. She's having, having a really solid season. Scott getting that to Grosso. Lawrence chasing after that. And Rachel Daly keeping her place at right back. Four now, but excelling really in forward areas in the US. They're off season in the US at the moment, so a lot of these Canadian players that do play over there are in the thick of it, like so many of the England players are. But though, as I said, so many of these Canadian players do play in football in Europe as well. well one thing's for certain, I think, in the build-up in the tournament, yeah, continuity is critical. And under Wiegmann, I think, they've been a solid group that have been building together. And I think for those players not in the starting lineup. They know they're going to be in and around it because the number and volume of games there will be throughout the Euros. England showing some promise in these early stages here. Walsh, though, giving it away. Spoke too soon. Here's Fleming. Rosso. Under pressure there. 
Bright. Along with that one, England. A bit of a blind pass from Daly. Hemp. Now, one or two. Greenwood. To Walsh. Hemp now. Stokes is all a bit tight over there, and Hamilton applying the squeeze. Heitema. Gilles back to the goalkeeper. Well, certainly a good opportunity for both Russo and Toon in that central area with Frank Kirby playing on the right hand side. Certainly get to see Toon play against the low block defence. Russo in particular, forward who would like to come to feet, certainly will drop into midfield at times to create the overloads. Buchanan taking a chance and getting away with it. But then that's good play from him to dispossess her. And is there an opening here for England? Two couldn't quite get it under control. Revere. Down for Walsh. Becky. Inside to Fleming. Heitemann. She helps it on. And the flag goes up. Saw that coming. Oh, what a great pace and intensity to the game. This brilliant pressure again from Lauren Hemp in the midfield. I feel every time Canada run centrally with the ball, England setting traps to regain possession. Well, Lauren Hemp visiting Norwich this weekend, bring the second game against Spain. In our home county. Canada settling with an early England pressure. Strong centre back pairing that they have. Julian Buchanan is Grosso. Confident play from her. Gilles. These French speakers, of course, in this Canada side as well. Buchanan. Revere. She gets the break that time to get away from Hemp. Revere carrying it forward. Rose is in the middle. Becky. It was a clever play, intelligent crosser of the ball. But Stokes tight to her there. So much promise to the start of this one. Two well matched sides. Becky to take this corner. England have everybody back except for Frank Kirby. Goes the corner from Becky, and header from Buchanan, and England scramble it away. Millie Bright, but it will be a goal kick in the end. I was about to say Canada haven't scored a goal from a free kick or corner in the last ten matches, but I didn't want to say it because I had a sneaky suspicion a chance was going to be created. Always the way. Well, it's a good back post ball. Buchanan superior in the air to Williamson. Two. She loses it to Heitemann. Becky. Stokes not allowing her to turn. She knows her game pretty well. It's Buchanan. Jill looking for the ball over the top and. Rose is onside. Lawrence sends it in. Canada do have plenty forward there. Here's Hemp going to do some defending. Never have seen her this deep in the previous six matches. But she does her job well there. Toon can't get England going, but maybe Hemp can now. She wants that run over the top from Russo. He's just checked off enough there by Buchanan. Good defending. Oh, it's good play from. Canada to defend that situation. I think Toon needs to do better, hold the ball up. Hemp's looking for a runner from Russo, but Buchanan, very quick defender. Yeah, Kadisha Buchanan been in the Canada team since 2013, over 100 caps. And she's only 26. We do 
played plenty of international ma matches, the Canadian players, to make up for the fact that so many of them aren't able to play regular senior club football. Here's Walsh. Buchanan misses that one, Russo offside. And I mentioned, of course, Buchanan with her 113 caps. Well, you can see the way Canada are defending. They're outnumbering England centrally. The space for England is down the sides. It's not the first time you've seen a ball played down the side of Buchanan. Equally for Canada, they're looking to build up with Lawrence, their left back, playing really, really high. And with Rose coming across to play in between Daly and Bright, there's a real overload on this side of the pitch. Rosso. Buchanan. Sheridan. Undercooked that. And Hemp gets there first. Hemp has looked bright so far for England. Back it goes. And off it goes, Williamson! Oh, not that far away, and a reaction says it all. Well, playing Williamson in there, you certainly got a technician capable of scoring from this range. Strikes it really well. But we have to talk about Lauren Hemp. What a start from her, the pressure she's put in this Canadian defence under. is immense. She's setting the tone for England. And a good sign, of course, because we know she's a very very promising player more than that but to see her do it against the best sides it's always the truest test positive start so far for Ben Priestman who's from the northeast herself I did see her singing the Canadian national anthem beforehand that's where her loyalty's life are now she's doing a fantastic job for their side previous assistant on the level previous assistant for England as well Revere. In goes Bright, tight too, aggressive defending, but Rose does well. Fleming. Well, we'll repeat it again, a great start to this game, great flow to it. More aggressive defending from England, they're really compact. Every time Canada try to use that numerical advantage inside, they're swarmed with numbers. Back four playing a nice high line. Ella Toon, part of every squad for Serena Vigna so far. As her side defends this set piece. Popped into the penalty area, testing one. Bright left it. Had to be dealt with there. And Williamson and England clear. And as far as Lawrence. It's really one of the world's best left backs. Well, like I said at the beginning, she's playing really high on this left-hand side. And with Huitema and Rose both overloading, they've got a 3v2 down that side. That's why we're not seeing much of Frank Kirby, who's being forced quite deep. And all of England's play, therefore, is down the left-hand side. It's Frank Kirby. He's involved in the Latvia win. Didn't need to be. Keep her fresh. You know what, she can play out on this right-hand side. What I will say is that Fran Kirby is second in the WSL for XG and XG assisted. With Lauren Hemp fifth. You know, England have got two players that can create chances. Sounds like a good player, Fran Kirby, doesn't she? She's decent. <laughs> no bias at all there, Emma. <laughs> Lawrence inside helped on again tackling there from Bright an aggressive defender so far I think it's what she has to be against Rose she's so quick that if you let her turn and get down the side she'll cause problems Williamson that's out by Scott 170 two caps for her now so much experience in this Canada side wall shopping it on Toon can't really get in the game at the moment but has the ball now for the Manchester United 
talent do here? Space to run into. And helps it on. It just won't break for England there. Good tracking back from Fleming. England still have it. Williamson. Heitema eases her off the ball. Canada will look to counter. Grosso. Fleming. With it. Such great potency in the fullback area is Canada. Do you know what? It's great to see two flying fullbacks. Both Hemp and Kirby have been forced deep. Here's Lawrence. PSG flyer. Trying to play it inside. Bright reads the danger again. And Daly has to turn out of trouble. Calmly done in the end. Kirby. Squeezing that to Russo. Tricky for Ella Toon at the moment, though. Yeah, it's difficult. She's not getting a lot of space. This is why I think it's a perfect game for her to develop. And certainly with Desire Scott and Grosso in that area, they're not allowing her much time on the ball. Big test for her tonight. She has it now. She leaves it for Russo. And bundled to the ground by Lawrence. But that's where England have been good in the turnover. Aggressive turn Canada over and they're quick to transition. Not much else Lawrence could do there. Good play from Russo. So Frank Kirby with the free kick. Well, on the flip side, England have scored a massive 12 goals from set pieces in their last 10 games. That's what we want to hear. Let's see. Kirby clips it in. Bright attacking it. Well defended in there by Buchanan. And all her teammates gather around her. Well, it had to be. What a brilliantly flat driven ball by Fran Kirby. Picking out her Chelsea teammate. Good defending from Buchanan. Stretching, arching, doing enough. England take the corner short, though. Almost catching Canada out. And that's an awkward bounce for Sheridan, but she's going to be penalised as Hemp. Oh, no, it's going to be a corner. It will be a corner. England showing their variety with their set pieces. They go short once more, and Canada's still not ready. And in he goes, and Sheridan pushes it away, and Bright! Oh! That is stunning for the centre-back! With top-class technique, what a goal from Millie Bright! Well, what a finish. Absolutely brilliant from Millie Bright. Again, variety with the set-pieces, this time short. The outswinger towards the back post. Sheridan does well initially. And Bright does so well, gets over the ball. Oh, hope to see a few more of those for club as well as country. Great finish and a great start by Millie Bright. And England in particular. Just a little nick off a Canadian player, but that won't take much gloss off that for Serena Vigman. She'll enjoy that one. And Millie Bright certainly did her fourth goal for England. And all those goals have come in this qualification campaign. Confident start from England and they get their reward. Although almost on cue, Greenwood adding that to a red shirt. And Stokes. No, oh, you can see it's confident. This team's growing with every game, with every performance. Players improving all the time. I think it's shown in the opening 22 minutes, been dominant. Williamson. to Russo, Jill getting tight to her, but Russo does well, moved on to Walsh, England, 
Numbers on the left now, Hent. Here she goes. And goes on and a cover from Buchanan. Had to. Oh, it's just brilliant play again from Hent. But let's talk about England's build-up play. Because it all starts with the ball being slipped to Williamson in the spaces that you can exploit a diamond midfield. And from there, the switch is out to Hemp. Exceptional. Yeah, Lauren Hemp, eye-catching start. We wouldn't expect anything less from her. Bright lingering again outside the six-yard box. Lisa ball in. Walsh. Russo. She have another go here. Bright, what can she deliver from here? Hangs it to the back post. Daly helping it on. Canada stretched here, Toon. Shot blocks, it was from Greenwood. And Scott with the calmest of turns on the, her own D. Oh, how brilliant was that from Scott? Looked like she had all the time in the world, but relentless pressure from England. I think showing their dominance, not just in the first phases of their set pieces, but the second and third. They're around every ball that drops. Well, what about her movement here from Millie Bright on this goal? It's like a striker. Well, most people may already know this, but she was a striker as a kid growing up. But in these positions, she does so well in the second phases. On top. Start of this game. And Walsh, Russo. And it took a little nick there, almost caught Sheridan out. But it's busy back there for the two centre halves of Canada. Well, it is because you've got Williamson and Walsh pulling the strings in midfield. It's a lovely slip ball in behind to Russo. The cutback was on to Frank Kirby. Buchanan. And Buchanan stepping forward, but England not allowing them time. Shield. To Lawrence. Quickly in there is Kirby. Who's in attendance at the Riverside? Delighted with what they've seen so far. Bright game. A game where both sides have shown their quality. A game though, that England are leading in and looking pretty good so far. They also look pretty solid. I do attribute some of that down to the pairing of Walsh and Williamson. I think I personally have liked to see the pair of them play together. I think they offer so much in and out of possession for the team. Williamson missing point just then. Russo couldn't get into the path of Toon. Working hard to try and win it back, but here's Heitemer. It's a tall, young striker. Up front for Canada, who's having an excellent season for TSG. Revere, who wants to get four, but Hint. There again, Sheridan. Buchanan. Becky, but just didn't have that time. Walsh picks her pocket. And Kirby tries to send it through. Russo, oh, just behind Toon. Manchester United pair couldn't link up there. Well, England again showing their quality on the counter-attack. Because Canada are pushing their full-backs up so high. If they turn the ball over, it's so easy to get at the centre-back pairing. There's no protection whatsoever for Buchanan and Gile. Not quite on the same wavelength there. Walsh. The way this game has started, that link-up will come, though. Walsh. 
and all her qualities on the ball. What a good screen for England in this game at the moment with help from Williamson. Stokes. I know though, it's obviously keeping the consistency of this type of performance because Canada will have their moments. They will, but they have to stop turning the ball over in the first instance. When you play with two attacking fullbacks, if you don't secure possession of the ball, which they haven't done well enough, they'll be exposed. Becky down the line to Rose, needs some support here. Many bright across. Rose showing the trickery. Elusive play. And forcing her back. Scott into Fleming. It's tidy play. Rosso helping it on. Revere. Fleming again. Passing around the pitch. But some decent touches in there from Jesse Fleming. A player who you have under your stewardship. Well, you can see she's having to come a little bit deeper to get on the ball. There's very little space between England's lines, so she has to come lower to get on it. But England's front line have worked so hard to allow Canada so little time in possession. Winning it back again there. Daly had to commit. Oh, she's hurt herself here. Straight away reacted in pain and frustration. Scott a little late. It was there to be won the ball. She accepts it. That's very Scott. Yeah, I think it was there to go for. I think she's just caught her on the top of her foot. Rach is a tough girl. And she is back up. On cue. Williamson. Kirby. I'll take that down. Nicked off her by Scott and a little tug on the shirt. But Scott at the base of that midfield for Canada. Such an experienced player. Desiree Scott. It's Fleming. Buchanan. They're sending it forward. Heitema. And there's Millie Bright again. Not for the first time. Winning the ball and striding out and setting England going. Hemp. Can England work it to the right now? The answer is yes, is Williamson. Hemp. Cannon in there. Becky. Stokes. That's been an interesting battle so far. There's been so many. I think it's been so aggressive from England, they're defending. Bright in particular, anything that's come within her vicinity, she's nicked and it turns into a transition. I think at times, perhaps, Russo, Toon, Kirby, they've got to do better with the ball that have been played up to them. And Jill just helping that forward, and Mary Earps, would you believe it, hasn't had much to do so far. <laughs> I think when teams start to concede goals or the question marks that have been over there with, with England's defending, you automatically assume it's with the back four. As far as I'm concerned, England had to get it right in midfield. I certainly see a foundation to be built upon with Walsh and Williamson. As they say, if you can keep it tight, you only need one. England have one at the moment. Wasn't quite enough for Spain earlier after all their changes. Disrupted their flow. Both sides able to make six changes. In three intervals. Lawrence. Rose will get to that. No, she won't because Bright is there, but it breaks to Fleming. Becky's made a run. And Greenwood going up for that. Stokes. We were taking no chances. Buchanan. Revere. Buchanan trying to get forward there. Drive her side on. Well, it's difficult for Canada to build any sustained attack. Certainly a team that are comfortable to be without the ball. 
but England have done well so far in their counter pressing to put pressure on Canada, make it difficult for them to get the ball up to Huitema and Rose. Well, no doubt you've been impressed by England so far, their approach to this game structure, structurally. I think it's being built upon game after game. You know, Serena will know more than anyone how important it is to face tough opposition. It's exactly the game that this team needs at this stage. Greenwood. Stokes. Hemp now. Room. And that spells trouble for the opposition. Hemp trying to pull it back. Russo blocks. Surely on the rebound. No, another big block in there. Well, it opened up for England, but some desperate defending from Canada keeps them out. Well, it's having to be because Hemp is causing all sorts of problems down that left-hand side for Riviere. The cutback ball, the initial block from Buchanan, the second block, brilliant defending. What a rock. Alicia Buchanan is back there for Canada. Four Champions League titles with Leon. Greenwood Walsh in there. Some nice touches so far. Walsh once more. Daly. Kirby squeezed off it there. Here's Fleming. And Rose has got room. And Becky's in the middle, Heitema joining them in the middle. Lawrence. Who can use either foot. Who goes with her left and right. Becky. And again. Getting it out to Revere. Heitema waiting for the cross. Defending for him to do, but Revere's turned her and sends it in a good ball. And Bright is there again for England. Well, this is the type of defensive test that England need. Really good wing play from Revere. Hemp having her work cut out this time. Brilliant defending from Bright. Just first to the ball. Walsh. Room for Daly. I don't think wasn't quite on the same wavelength there with Kirby, and that should be easily dealt with by Canada. A bit unsure though back there, and Sheridan clears it away. Well, what about Kirby in this first half? Emma out there on that right hand side, you want her more centrally? Yes, but I understand a player like Toon. Also a number 10. I think they can both play the same roles out wide and inside. And I think at times, you know, Kirby has to pick the right opportunities to come inside. But it's been difficult for her because Daly's been unable to get forward to provide width. That's helped on. Now look at him to get to that. She had no right to get there. She's unlucky in the end because Rivera is no slouch herself. No, but you ask any defender in the WSL what it's like to play against Lauren Hemp. She's unbelievable and getting better with every game. And maybe the type of player that Spain could certainly deal with to make them the complete package. But England have her. Here's Walsh, laid off by two. Walsh. Thread the ball between the lines there. Fleming works her way out of trouble. Grosso. Revere. Down the line for Rose, but Bright's reading everything on the cover and quick off her line there. So positioning was good. But Deanne Rose, great story. Really. Playing for Reading at the moment. Said she signed for Reading because she wanted to be near London. This was the city she knew in England. A good time of things, Kelly Chambers. 
Here's him. Stokes. Russo in the middle. Who can Stokes pick out? Russo didn't gamble, perhaps. Either way, more space for England. Again, really good play down that left-hand side. This time with Stokes getting forward. Russo in a great position. She elects to go with her foot. She's played just a little in front of her. That hat-trick she scored against Lafayette, the fastest in England team's history. On the bench as well is Williamson. Two. Daly. Chance for her to get forward. How could she get deliver here? Hangs it in there. Helped on by Kirby. Him trying to lay it back. I think Kirby was caught in two minds about leaving that, actually. Here's Greenwood. Stokes. And his fullback's able to get forward all of a sudden. Well, that's what happens when you get a bit of controlled possession. Certainly think England been on top in terms of that part of their game the last 10 minutes. Walsh giving the ball away to Becky. Down the line, Fleming. Crunching. Big challenge in there from Brightford. Good balance from Fleming. Scott. And England swarm around to win it back. Really bright on a mission tonight. Her form since January has been outstanding. It's not a surprise to me, this performance. Certainly leading with everything she's doing. I think her and Hemp have been the outstanding performers, but Williamson in that midfield, along with Walsh, has certainly been key drivers too. Lost by two. Lawrence. Williamson read it. So many of these pieces in this England team working pretty well so far. Don't discount Canada. They are a gutsy side. They never give up. Never feel they're out of the game. Fleming. Williamson. Two. Ghosted into the space there. Kirby. And she free Russo. Russo. And had she gone away from Buchanan there? I think she just lost her footing at the moment. Well, one thing's for certain, England and the counter really go from back to front really quickly. Good release play from Toon. And I think 50-50 moment. But because Canada's fullbacks are so advanced on the pitch, it's why England are getting so much space around the two centre-backs. Risky football away from home, but makes for an entertaining game. And they're on cue, lost by Revere to Hemp. Williamson. This is Daly. And it goes Frank Kirby. Williamson. Walsh. Walsh again. Billy Bright to Williamson, to Kirby. And I think we talk about that screen, but they've also got two excellent passes at the base of that midfield as well, England. Like I said, that box four, Greenwood, Walsh, Williamson and Bright all having very good seasons. Here's Hemp. Moving, moving, going on. And Buchanan, who seems to be the one player who's in her way by the end. She's beating everybody else. You feel like she's the only defender Canada's got at this moment. Heitema loses it. Stokes. Russo. Nice flick from Kirby to keep the move alive. Williamson. Walsh. Greenwood. Stokes. Gets it back. Nice work, Kirby. Grosso, it's another good spell from England here, though. Greenwood sends it in. And... She's stretching for that one. Daly. That's a good ball. Williamson 
took it beautifully, clips it back in, brilliantly worked for England, but they couldn't finish it off through him. Oh, great play from England all round. What is so impressive for this team is how quickly they get the ball back. It's a lovely run from Williamson. And just clips it to the back post, to the right foot of Lauren Hemp, slightly behind. I think it's a calf. But great play by England. Really, really good first half. Broke her scoring duck in spectacular fashion and scored for England. And then got four against Latvia. No matter who you score your goals against, just to get those goals for your country. A boost of confidence for a player who's already performing very well. And Mary Earps, that's gone straight out of play. Might just a little bit cold back there. I think people don't realise Russo, Toon, Williamson, even Hemp out wide, really still very young players. Here's Scott. Schill, England win it back. Walsh looking to play the pass, Kirby. What bodies forward here, Williamson. Oh, just behind Toon. So much potential in England's attack at the moment. Canada, thankful for the final moment. Well, Williamson disappointed. I know everybody knows her for the fabulous centre-back that she is. But what a midfielder I think she could turn out to be. She's got everything in her game, absolutely everything. Do you think she started in midfield, went into defence? We're back to midfield again, and certainly in this England side. Well, half time, a thoroughly entertaining first half, and one in which England, the better side, no doubt. Millie Bright with a fantastic finish. And some fine defending, summing up her half and England's half, really. Lauren Hemp, a threat down the left-hand side at all times against this Canada side. Only 1-0, but a very entertaining 1-0. England leading at the break at the Riverside. Analysis to come after the break. Just a reminder for you, we have all the Arnold Clark Cup matches to look forward to. And on Sunday, England take on Spain from Carrow Road in Norwich, 2.30 p.m. on ITV and STV. And then later that evening, Germany take on Canada at 7.45 on ITV4. Meanwhile, here at the Riverside Stadium, look at them. They are absolutely loving it. The crowd are entertained. No one looks as cool as she does tonight, though. 8,000 fans or so in here this evening. And they are getting a show because England so far a 1-0 up against Canada a beautiful volley from Millie Bright she would be pleased with that one going back to her roots as a striker but she's also putting a shift in defensively the England team are in the driving seat at the moment the second half is coming next the atmosphere looks quite fun out there doesn't it maybe we should go enjoy them in a second <laughs> Ian Wright's alongside me Eni Luko as well second half is coming up in a minute just tell me a little bit Eni about what you would like to see from England I think more of the same. I think it was a really good half for England, more counter-pressing, more trying to create opportunities higher up the pitch. I think we can see a bit more from Alessia Russo. I do understand, though, that this is her first time playing up front in that nine role, but can she hold up the ball more? Can she bring others into play? Um, and just more from Lauren Hemp as well. She's been brilliant. Yeah, I'll go with that with, with any there. You know, it's, it's tough when you come in like this because she's under a lot of pressure. And what you want to do when you get into these situations is we know she's not the quickest in respect of turning them, but if she can get the ball, link the play, keep us moving up the field because we're winning it so well, if we can get hold of it and then we can get people like Ella Toon involved, then we get the ball out to Lauren Hem and then we're going to cause some problems. That's all you want to see. OK, here we go. The teams are coming back out for the second half. Your commentators taking you through this one. Back to Emma Hayes and Seb Hutchinson. Well, a promising half, to say the least, from the Lionesses. But another half to come against a side who offer much in themselves to cause England problems. But Millie Bright, a fantastic first half. And her club manager watching on as well. Not surprised by her performance one bit. I'm proud of her. That's what I am. I, I thought her first half performance epitomised the top pro that she is. But I think, like I said, since January, I think she's been exceptional for club and now country. And what about Serena Vigman? showing 
the class she is as a coach already in that first half, thinking about the game differently for England. Brilliant manager, brilliant experience, tactical, got a strong foundation. She's not just chopping and changing the team. She's building upon the good things, the good foundations. I think there's a lot to like about the work she's doing. Well, Georgia Stanway, another of England's younger players, though it feels like she's been around for a while now. Uh, she's come on for England. And Ella Toon making way. Well, I guess we won't know whether that's tactical or injured or injury to Toon. Stanway, I think, a player too who has been finding form for club. Played many positions for Man City this season and before, but I think she's in her strongest position now. She's had an eventful season, to say the least, as well. In goes Lawrence and fouls, just like she did at the start of the first half. Well, I think for Canada to get back into this game, they have to be a little bit more secure defensively. So many times England overloading the two centre-backs because Rivera and Lawrence almost playing like left wingers. What can Canada do in the second half? Grosso driving forward, carrying it forward. Rose, uh, Grosso in that midfield for Canada, responsible for that winning penalty that took them to Olympic gold. But Deanne Rose there, she scored a really important penalty, the fifth one. If she'd missed it, Sweden would have won the gold medal. Well, one thing Canada know how to do is to stay in the game. I think at 1-0, they're very much in it. Just need to have a little bit of a better structure in possession. And I think that will make it harder for them to be counted on. You can see already Rivera a little bit lower. Becky a lot wider. I think they're going to need to do that with more balance this half. She'll working it wide to Lawrence. She'll... Buchanan. Long searching to Rose, wouldn't quite reach her in the end, and Daly on the cover. Rachel Daly starting for England today. But Lucy Bronze, an option on the bench. Oh, but I totally understand why Daly's playing. These are players that have been playing regularly. Lucy Bronze been out injured. Here's Heitemann. Hasn't had a chance, really. Kirby. And Lawrence penalised there. That's a flabbergasted face of ever I saw. Yeah, I see that a few times in training. I do think it's a foul. And a booking. I don't know about a booking, but a free kick for sure. Yes, our referee, Lena Latovara from Finland. Showing the first yellow card of the game. down by Becky. Mary Earps. Once again, though, I'm not saying she's hoping to be tested, but she's hoping to be tested and keep the ball out, of course. Well, one thing's for certain, players are being provided with the trust from Serena. They've earned their opportunities. And she'll chasing back to cover that and Sheridan plays it straight to an England shirt wouldn't break for Stanway here's Sheridan again Hemp quickly upon her and forcing the ball out to play well, it's really difficult when that ball's played back to Sheridan because both fullbacks are high up the pitch Canada are not going to get out on a backward playing ball unless they drop a little bit lower down the sides Here's Greenwood. Stokes. And 
and working so hard to get that ball back off England. Here's Greenwood. Russo. She'll takes that ball off her easily there. Buchanan. Be the last woman in defence in the first half. Well, like I said, there needs to be more balance for Canada. You can see the way they press from the front in that 4-4-2 dime, and they're forcing England inside. And if there's one area of England's game I think they have to prove, improve tonight is how to break that press. Looking to get on with it here, Canada. Becky. Revere. Able to link up there with Fleming, who made her debut a long time ago now, really. At the age of 15 back in 2013. It's the racking up of this is the 95th cap. She made that debut. Priestman, the assistant to John Herdman. Hello, Easterner. Walsh. Williamson. Russo. Williamson taking up some interesting positions in this game. Effective ones, but there's Scott covering. Scott, so many games for Canada in that position. Calm head. Buchanan. Jill. Charging out to meet the ball there was Williamson. There's Revere. Fleming. Four Englishers around her, and England win it back. Walsh. The manipulation of the ball there from Walsh to keep it away from Becky. Here's Manchester City's. Walsh again picks the pass, finds Hemp, and Hemp turns, spins round Revere, and opens things up for England. Hemp into Kirby, just a bit of momentum there, but here's Williamson, Daly sending it in. Russo going up. There's Buchanan once more for Canada, and Grosso away. Well, England have to get past Buchanan, especially aerially, if they're to score. Grosso, Lawrence. Hopeful ball forward, really, and mopped up by Earps easily. Well, Buchanan herself made her debut as a teenager. 2013. The 2015 World Cup for a country. Showing why she's one of the world's top defenders in this game. Lawrence. Nice play from Rose. Very good play from Rose, slipping it through. his Fleming. And went for the pass across. Comes to nothing in the end for Canada. Well, it does, but that, they are the dangers of trying to nick the ball early, like Millie Bright does here. Went the wrong side. Great run from Fleming. I thought she was going to get a head up and get a shot, but it was too wide for that. And there's a the right decision. Nine. Becky didn't continue with her run. Just a reminder there again of the opposition. Spain found out as well today. Certainly much better structurally from Canada. Not only are they more aggressive from the front, two front players looking to force England in field where they have the extra body. Vicky, that's a good ball, Scott. Fleming. It's Hemp again, relentless in that defensive work, and Buchanan loose with the pass. Greenwood, Shield in the right place. Here's Daly. Stanway. This game picking up where it left off in the first half. Stanway. Out it goes to Hemp. Rousseau on the move. Hemp drifting inside. Stanway. Kirby. Over 
lane there in the end, but Canada can't counter. Walsh and Stokes. And no defensive errors cost them in their previous game against Canada. A lot tighter tonight. Here's Daly. Given away. Lawrence. And she's in full flow now. Gliding across the pitch. Heitema helps it on. Becky. Time to cut inside a go on. Oh, that's the quality there. Jenny Becky. Canada second best in this game, but a reminder of their quality. What an excellent goal that is what? from the Manchester City player. Wow, what a finish that was from Becky. Really was. It comes, I think, for me, England losing the ball cheaply. An inside pass from Daly. I felt Kirby could have gone down the line. Nonetheless, great run from Lawrence. And Becky shows her composure, gets it back onto her left foot. Unstoppable finish. And showing the, the dangers when you play top teams. One chance, 1-1. One, one. And the first goal England have conceded under Serena Vigman. I'm sure she knows, or would have known it was coming. And their Priestman delighted. As you said, Emma, they have looked a lot better in this second half. Well, I think when Daly picked up the ball, the space was down the outside. Frank Kirby on the inside. The ball's under hit, it's a turnover, and England out of position. Well, there's a late challenge there on Scott, referee playing advantage here for Canada. They've sprung into life. And one back by Stanley. Greenwood, Williamson, Stanway, Kirby. Thought she was fouled, England able to continue, but Lawrence in there. Heitema and Rose through the middle. Heitema instead goes wide. Lawrence flooding forward here, Canada. Sent in, Bright clears it away. Stanway. What I know is this is the test England need. Need to concede a goal at home with a quietened crowd and see what their response is. I think at the moment they need to deal with the fact that Heitema is playing almost like a withdrawn nine, causing problems. Space for him, and through, and away! Stings the palm of the goalkeeper. Sheridan keeps her out. Or you just get the ball out to Lauren Hemp, who goes 1v1. What a quality pass this is from Walsh to her teammate. Drives inside, Rivera, an inexperienced defender, and it's shown at times. And although Buchanan comes across, his forces Sheridan into a good save. Corner for England, looking to respond after conceding that goal. Greenwood to take. Canada have everybody back. Decent corner sent in. Heitema didn't get much on that. They haven't cleared it, Canada either. They're trying to keep it alive. Williamson. Sends it back in again. This could be awkward for Canada. Drops to Bright. Francis, another go. Just wouldn't sit up in the same way. Her eyes lit up there again. I could, I could hear my coaching voice say, Millie, let it drop. Again, unpredictable from England. There's nothing particularly innovative from their set pieces, but their movement is excellent. Well, England being pegged back here, and Canada bringing on the substitute. Michelle Prince coming on for Heitema. And on comes Quinn, an inspiration to so many as the first non-binary and transgender Olympic champion. Two important players for Canada coming on now, well, as they have, they're back on level terms. Well, even more pace for Canada, and it'll be a... Fantastic test for that back four of England. This is what we wanted. Top class opponents for this England side. Touted as one of the favourites for the Euros. The World Cup next year, though. They're well on course for that. These are the kinds of tests that will await them. Buchanan into Becky. Oh, 
helping it on to Fleming. Lawrence springing Canada's step now. Fleming works it well. Quinn. It goes to Revere. Quinn again. This is promising for Canada. Revere sending it in. Played only as far as Scott. Lawrence has really come to life in this second half. Showing her threat down that side. Buchanan commanding as ever. Stanway can't lose it there. They are on this now, Canada. Oh, they really are. They're dominating the possession as well. Making it difficult for England to get the same type of pressure they did in the first half. Quinn, have to get on the ball. Played it forward. And Bright stepping out. Probably the most difficult moment for England in this game so far. And they have become this tricky period. Walsh. Out it goes to Daly. That's relief of the pressure. Walsh wants it back again. Goes to Williamson. Hemp, who's one of the best release valves. Hemp inside. The pass there, though. And Fleming, what about that for a ball? And Rose. Prince in the middle. Rose might go alone and try to pick out Prince right across. So rapid on the counter. One ball from Jesse Fleming. And it's coming again from turnover in midfield from England. Daly gets caught. Stepping too early. And with Prince and Rose, Canada have two players that can certainly change the dynamic for them going forward. Brilliant counter-attacking players. They're really carrying a threat now here, Canada. This excellent game shows no sign subsiding in that respect. Becky sending it in. They defended in there. And England, can they break away quickly? Also's defensive work, the striker back there helping England out, trying to get forward. Well, I think England need to get hold of the game in midfield. Williamson, such a good first half, been really quiet the second. It's knocked out of their flow by Canada. The right in this one, that could be loose. Prince hunting that down, rescued by Bright. But that's not the best pass, and Herbs had to be quick. Shaky here for England. Just lacking control, too much turnover. Walsh. Inside it goes, Stanway. Not on the same wavelength for now. England are lining up four substitutes here. I think Higman notices that they're losing the flow of this game and there's some big names coming on. Paris, Bronze, Carter and Mead. I think the change is needed. I also know he's still got to evaluate a squad, so it's an important moment for all four of them to come in the game. Revere. Certainly explosive going forward. Him tucking back at her there. She's worked back very well, him. Revere stayed down. It was intercollegiate football, as Emma was referring to earlier on. So common for the Canadian players without their own full professional league. But Canada down, a player at the moment. England pressing on. Stokes. It's not the best ball. Quinn on the cover. But Revere still hasn't got up yet. Certainly not sure the cause of that. I don't know if it's a muscle injury or not. Well, that gives England a chance to make substitutions here. Rachel Daly off. 
There's going to be a warm welcome here for Lucy Bronze, the former World Player of the Year. And back in an England shirt after her injury problems. Williamson going off here, so the armband has been passed to Millie Bright. She wore it in the November internationals. Nikita Paris. She comes on for England, cap number 58 of the now Arsenal forward. Greenwood making way, so Jess Carter on. We're going to see her at centre half here, I would imagine. That's where you want to see her, perhaps. She can play anywhere. She'll do anything. She's deserving of this. I think with Mead coming into the game as well, England need another threat going forward. Paris on the other side. It'll be a chance for England to assert themselves going forward and Fran Kirby coming inside where I felt she needed to. Canada are going to have to make a change here because Re Revere not moving too well. And as she goes off injured, she's seeing Hemp lead the field as well. So that battle, which has been fun to watch, is over. Chloe Lacasse is going to come onto the field. Plays her football in Portugal with Benfica. Just her third cap at the age of 28. She makes her way on. There was a debate actually whether she wanted to play for Iceland. Just spending time playing in that country. Proved not ineligible in the end, and now she's going off. See where she lines up. The shift that Canada make here. But England with that quadruple substitution. Oh, that changed the flow of the game. A flow that was drifting towards Canada. Here's Stokes. Sends it in. Oh, mixed up at the back there. Wouldn't fall to an English shirt cleanly. Here's Bronze. Covered by Fleming. And we've got bronze against Lawrence down that side. Heavyweight battle. Well, it's certainly a brilliant option for England to have. But bronze been out with injury. Certainly will love to get forward in this game. So it will be a battle. Her and Paris versus Lawrence on that side of the pitch. No slouches, those players on that side. Here's Walsh. It through to Russo, Paris, and that's easier for Sheridan this time. Well, the big change for me is the fact that England have almost gone a one and two in midfield. The Stanway and Kirby looking to push forward with Walsh at the base. Well, there's a. I think there's a bit of miscommunication here because Revere didn't realise she'd been subbed off and she wanted to get back on. Well, she can't now. Being communicated to her. What a cast is on. What a challenging game it's been for her. As you mentioned before, a collegiate player in the US felt at times her inexperience caused Canada problems in the first half, but I think she's a big prospect. It's a good pass in there from Scott. And there's Carter straight in. Picking up where Bright's been leaving things. Chelsea pairing at the back. Quinn. It's a beautifully poised game, this is. Both sides showing their quality at times. A great person to really pick the result from here. Here's Buchanan. One here. It was 1 1 between Germany and Spain earlier. This is the final score. And all the sides will be level on points, level on everything so far. Vertical order then. Well, certainly a lot of changes for Canada. Becky coming into a right back position. And as I mentioned before, for England, certainly more attacking in the midfield. Prince allowed to turn. Shell Prince, another of the Olympian champions. That's the football in the US. But it 
feels like it's one of those games at the moment where just a little bit of quality, a little a mistake perhaps. Really evenly matched as we thought they might be. That's going to be a goal kick with the defending there by Carter. But I do think Canada have been the better team second half. The way that they've pressed from the front, they've made it difficult for England to build out the back. I think they've dominated in the midfield areas. That's something for England to figure out. When you play against a diamond in defence, they have the extra player. So England, I think, need to use the sides much better. Hence the reason why Paris and Mead are on. Bronze has made a charging run forward, but Lawrence cuts it out. Paris, Bronze, Paris. Goes back to Walsh. Carter. Stokes. Stanway looks towards Lucy Bronze, has caused Canada problems in the past. Here is Bronze, facing up against Lawrence. Bronze was at Lyon, not that long ago, faced off against PSG's Lawrence. I do think it's what England have needed down that right-hand side, so the double width of Bronze and Paris will create problems. Which gets it back to Carter. Here's Stanway. Stokes. Nice play from Beth Mead and a snapshot as well. And Sheridan is behind that one. Well, oh, Beth Mead not afraid to shoot. Preferring to come inside the pitch. Beats Quinn with ease. And it would have gone wide. Say so not being called up by England. Early last year, really fired her on. English shirt, she's been excellent under Bigman. Oh, she's had a brilliant season so far. She's also won the second most fouls in the WSL this season. Causing defences problems. Moving to here against Canada in these closing stages. Lawrence, found a bit of room. Gets away from Paris, sends it in as well. I guess going up for that, and England should see that out. We knew this tournament would certainly be one you wouldn't want to miss, really. So many top nations involved in these competitions outside of the big tournaments, of course. Such an education. Even a little concerned, though, at the moment don't have the control that they had in the first half. Well, they certainly can't play inside. And that dominance inside in the first half was part of the reason they were on top. This half, balls are only being allowed out to fullbacks, and because Stokes and Daly were playing so low, it was difficult for England to build out. Yes, Canada's English coach responding well. After an excellent first half from England's Dutch coach. Well, what she's done is shut off the spaces. I think from these areas, England are trying to work the double switches, be a bit more patient in the possession. Carter getting plenty of touches. And she's come on. To wear into the game. This is bronze. Paris, those two have looked up frequently already. It's a loose pass from Bronze, though. And Becky was looking to get on the move and almost caused Canada a problem. Russo not getting a free kick there. And somehow Canada emerged with the ball. And down the line it goes, and Rose will get there. Brings up with her at the moment. He needs more support. And Rose. Lawrence. Rose, losing it, now Kirby, Walsh will look back for Kirby again, Hill should cover that though, and she does in commanding style. Well, centre-back pairing for Canada have had a lot to do, but this second half I think they've been excellent. 
limited Russo in particular to very little. I think she's had a quiet night. She's coming off now. And not a bad replacement for England, their record goal scorer. And a fine greeting from the crowd here at the Riverside. Well proven at this level. Absolutely phenomenal record for England. Will we get a winner in this game? Scott picking up on English soil after a spell at Knox County. Oops, nothing she could do about that Becky goal, that's for sure. Fleming. Lawrence acting into the challenges. Paris. White. Come back from an offside position. Sheridan getting there quickly. That's helping it on. The defending from Carter, but under pressure from Prince. Recovers it well in the end. Well, I think the good thing having White on the pitch certainly looking to take up as you mentioned those offside positions certainly going to provide a different threat England have to provide the service though Walsh oh, that's loose just running away from Lucy Bronze one of the many contingent in this English England squad who started life in the northeast of England Playing it inside, Rose sharp. The second half. Oh, that's a lovely turn from Prince. Danger still not clear. Becky going on. And a challenge diving in there from me. She got away with that. Buchanan. Who you have to say has been superb for Canada. She really has been excellent, especially second half. But so has Jesse Fleming. It's really growing into the game. Pulling the strings for Canada. Seem to hit the ball towards the cast in the air quite a lot. Well, I think what Fleming's done well is just release the ball down the sides for the front two. And England have really struggled second half here in particular. Both midfielders man marked. You see, Ertz doesn't have clear options. Shield. Fleming. They've shown some of. What took them to that Olympic title here, Canada? Never out of a game, no chance. No, absolutely not. Real resilience. Develop that whilst becoming champions. Here's Walsh. Kirby. Paris. Ball played inside the defender, but back it goes. Sent it by Walsh. White arriving. Buchanan in the right place. Lock in there. But he tried to help it on. Canada get it away. And it's opened up here. Fleming playing it forward. And what about that for a pass to Prince? And she couldn't find the finish, but the pass on point from Jesse Fleming. Now that's what I'm referring to. A wonderfully delivered pass in behind Carter and Bright. Perfectly weighted. Prince been menacing this second half. That's a loose pass. And in went Stokes to rescue it. Now. Lead can be released here, Buchanan across. And they tried to help it on, a bit rushed in their attack there. Buchanan, always there. Becky covering. And her versatility at the moment. Quinn. Eden winning it back. Here's Mead. Bring that ball away. Scott. Quinn. And they were caught there. By Mead, who's given the ball away. A couple of times in the last, last few minutes. It's been a transition game, second half, and I think it suited Canada more because of the pace up top. 
I think I think they've done a good job in midfield. I think Quinn coming into the game has added a lot to support Scott. Well, Diane Rose going off. She had an excellent game. Victoria Pickett comes off by just her third cap. Another who plays their football in the US for Kansas City. And they're off season at the moment. That is we're in pre-season at the moment with all of these those players. They certainly need their support at the moment. Quinn to head inside to Fleming. Kick it. Out it goes to Lawrence. Scott. Fleming. There's one side who look more likely to win this game. You feel it's Canada more assured at the moment in their play. And they take it quickly, that free kick. Pick it. Fleming, and it goes to Prince, who's been lively, and on the turn, and that should be Erps' uh, ball. Well, certainly a game of two midfields. England, first half, very dominant. Second half, Fleming pulling the strings for Canada, and look the most likely team to score. Right into Walsh. Bronze inside to Stanway. All bronzes pass. Walsh, fortunately, got that under control. And off to Stokes. He pulling wide. On the inside at the moment. They haven't looked too threatening in this second half as it's worn on. Walsh, get another chance here. Still Walsh. Of defending pretty well, but here's Stokes. White wants that ball played in. Buchanan away, saying that on repeat. Quinn. Well, read by Bright. This is Bronze heading away from Fleming. Bronze driving forward, trademark run from her. Inside to Parrish, who took it down well. Goes down. Here's White. Trying to fashion some space. Walsh, and that is Sheridan's. I think that's the first time we've seen England have quality out wide this second half. You think about the first half that Hemp had on the left-hand side. I think England have got more and more narrow the longer the game has gone on. And even with Mead and Paris coming into the game, because they're playing in a 4-2-3-1, they've always been inside the pitch need to be better in the wide spaces, just like bronze was. We know it's still a building process for this England side, but the Euros, of course, not that far away on home soil. Are we building too slowly? Yes. Scott, not going to get there. She's a flyer, but Fleming covering well. Wins the ball. Did she get there? By the way, on we go. Lawrence. That is a free kick to Canada this time. Square ball turnovers allow the counter for England, but what a ball recovery from Jessie Fleming. I think she's been outstanding in the second half. Some excellent performances out there on both sides. Here's Buchanan. Long ball forward. Here's Stokes. Walsh. Bright. Stood out in the first half. It's certainly be Canada's second half. Here's Bronze. I think that's why it makes it tricky to call a player of the match because Bright was that in the first half, along with him. I think second half, it's Fleming. Still a few minutes left to change things. The side does get a winning goal. 
will bear a lot of influence. Quinn swings it out. Lawrence, Quinn gets it back. Rush clearance there from Bronze. Scott, Canada looking to finish strongly here. Buchanan. Becky. Scott. Challenging from Stokes. It's been pretty solid there for England. White turns away from Buchanan, but she doesn't let you do that for too long. Yellow card. The one time somebody's got away from her. I can understand late on. Tactical foul. Definitely a yellow card. But we have to pay a lot of respect to Canada. Their Olympic champions have shown that in the second half. England push forward to try and win it. Bronze sends it in. White's going up for it. Wouldn't break for me to wait by Becky. Fleming. C. Bruce is making the run over her shoulder, but tucked by Carter. Here's Herbs. Walsh. Now Stokes. Carter wanted Stokes to play that back to Herbs. No other thought in Herbs' mind there than to get it forward. Now it breaks here for Kirby. Stokes. Walsh. Carter. Right. Bronze looking for the run forward. Meade, Gilles across. A solid defensive performance from Gilles. Really times it to perfection. Here's Paris. Winner here in this game. Bronze surging on. That breaks, fortunately, for Canada. Pick it. Sheridan. Forward it goes. Stanley. Yes. Bronze. Let's talk about the player of the match, Emma. It's a tough choice. Who, who have you gone for? I've gone for the player of the first half, Millie Bright, the goal scorer. I think she's been solid throughout the game, even though I felt Canada dominated second half. She's had a brilliant game tonight. And has England's goal tonight. I think she could do about Canada's goal. Finish that was from Becky. Here's Becky. Scott. Buchanan. This is Becky again. One one does feel a reflection of this game. Doesn't mean that's going to be the final result, though. No, it does. And it's not something. Perhaps we suspected after the first half performance. Real credit to Canada. I think the way they changed their pressing shape in the second half, far more aggressive, made it really difficult for England to build up. But I think this is something they're going to have to work at because other teams watching this tonight will certainly show how hard it is if you let England play out. Well, two of them. In this same town at the moment in Germany and Spain. And England do play Spain next, and that game is on ITV this Sunday. 2.30 pm. You don't want to mix that fixture. Canada. 
Villa will then face Germany later in the day. That game was on ITV4, 7.45 for that particular matchup. It's managed to get one of miss any of the games in this competition because of the calibre of the sides involved. Here's Becky, couldn't get that under control though. But her goal, we've had some two fantastic goals in this game. It was a brilliant finish, so composed from her. The way she cut back inside onto her left foot. And then Millie Bright hearing the announcement of her as player of the match. Better be brilliant now in the final few minutes. <laughs> Four minutes. Here's Bronx. Down the line it goes. Shield across. Another perfectly timed tackle on the Bordeaux defender. I think all round there's been good performances from both centre backs. Canada second half, both of them have been brilliant. Bronze. White beaten to it. Wouldn't break for Stanway. I feel like either side deserves to lose this game. I feel unjust in a way. No, oh, it's been a cracker of a game. Still time though. Carter. Walsh. Find Paris. Pick it. Runs into trouble though. Stanway. Kirby. Couldn't find the pass inside. Promising for the pass back almost. Matched upon by Ellen White. It's Kirby. And looking to nick it late. Four minutes left. Walsh. Mead. Mead. Back to Walsh. Stanway. Stanway! And Sheridan holds. I well, certainly know when Stanway gets the ball in and around the box, he'll pull the trigger. Something I wish Frank Kirby would have done a moment earlier. Quinn. It's Canada's turn now to threaten a late winner. And Stokes is beaten there. The cross is hung up. And Bright is there. A brave header to rescue the situation right at the death. Well, wow, what a header from Millie Bright at the back post. The first time, really, Stokes has been beaten in a 1v1. The ball hung up to the back post. Millie doesn't take her eye off it. The clash of heads between Fleming. Just doesn't take her eye off of it. Just brilliant performance from Millie. Pushing heads with Pickett, but then riding with her club teammate there. Both OK. I'm sure they're grateful for this official, because if I was refereeing on the training pitch, I'd have said, play on. Here's White. Bronze. Works it to Harris here. Hung up into that penalty area, but Meade couldn't win that. It's Stanway. To the final minute, you feel. Walsh. Now Paris. Nice turn. Goes down. They look towards the referee, not interested. What a pass from Kira Walsh. What a vision. The way a pass was superb. I think she has had a good game too, grown into it. a good cut from Paris. Do I think it's a penalty? I'm not VAR, so I'm not <laughs> going to answer. Well, they're not happy with that decision. That might be the final chance of the game. Serena Vigman will have learned a lot, that's for sure. About her New England side in their first test. England's winning.
Bright will see this out comfortably. What's been great is the number of players she's trusted to play tonight in key moments. Well, England's winning run comes to an end against high-class opposition. An excellent contest at the Riverside. Saw England win the first half with Millie Bright scoring the opening goal. An excellent volley from her. But Canada matched them in the second half. They were the better side in the second period. Janine Becky with an excellent...